Hey guys, welcome to the next episode on a playlist of repairs we're doing to this 1930s vintage arch craft arch top made by the K company somewhere between 1933 and 1937. And um, there's a playlist of the repairs that we've done and ultimately that we're going to do on this guitar. And you will see that playlist right about there, right about now. So, the story behind this is, uh, this is one of those marketplace, Facebook marketplace deals where you drive somewhere, you see some pictures. The pictures are never really the ones you want to see. I want to see the ones of the string height over the neck. I want to see uh, what the neck uh, joint looks like where it attaches to the body. I want to see that kind of thing. But anyway. So I looked at the pictures, I looked at the price. It was quite the drive for me. I bought another guitar that day, um, way off somewhere else. But anyway, so I meet somebody at a Ralph's Food King or something like that in the parking lot, and there it is, and I got my money. Well, on the phone, the guy had told me, you know what? Had this not been dropped out of its original chipboard case, it was deteriorating and falling to the ground. It would not have the cracks in it, it would not have the hole it had in it, and um, yeah, it'd be worth $500 without that. Well, you know, that's kind of like saying that I could have been the world's greatest Los Angeles Dodger had I been born, that's right, Billy Jean King. You saw it here of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Alrighty then. Hey, don't blame me. It was a giveaway. I don't know whether they ran out of people or what, but yeah. I might give that away in a prize, you know it? That's a good idea. I know it is, Ken. You always have the best ideas. So, we have fixed the hole. We have fixed the cracks. We have replaced the back binding that was celluloid that was literally falling off of this thing at great risk to my personal health. So, you could see what I'm doing. We went ahead and replaced the front binding and then we did some uh, work where the fretboard had shrunk and we had some fret action issues sticking out. Um, um, they were messy. It had no um, fret markers where you could look down and see. And so this guitar was never really intended to show up in some dive bar in some trash blues player's hand, but it come time to make a decision about you know, without these things, yeah, the guy was right, it's probably worth $500. But once I start doing this kind of stuff into it, the market changes to people that are crazy enough to like what I do to musical instruments. And the fact that my comp my uh, <laughs> my guitars are called junk pile guitars, kind of, yeah, let, let that sink in a little bit. But got to a point where I've heard somebody play this guitar that understands period correct music and knew what the instrument was and what it would do and I, I had the pleasure of that. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to hot rod this thing up. When I say that, that means I'm going to put pickups and controls on this thing or at least one pickup and electrify the thing. That immediately got a reaction from people out there like, why would you ruin this instrument? Yeah, the one that has the binding replaced, the hole in it, the cracks and all that. Yeah. Um, it had a good start on being ruined. I mean, it's solid, but to their point, I'm still going to hot rod this thing up. I'm going to electrify it, but I'm going to limit myself in the additions I make to not putting holes in the body that aren't here already, and we're not talking about this one. So, I have to use F holes. I have to use strap uh pin holes, um, tail uh, trapeze holes, um, top of the F hole, and most importantly, the holes here on top where the pit guard that used to be in, pit guards disappear off these things, and you can't ever find them, and then you have to try and figure out what one will fit what guitar, and then the mounts never match or whatever. So the key to this is to be able to produce a pit guard that you can actually mount electronics to 
that hides where you're pulling wires up through the body and that will hold a potentiometer for vo volume and stuff. So that's where we're going with this. You're going to see the next episodes being making the pit guard, building your own mounts because the mounts that are available out there do not match the guitars. There's going to be an episode where you're going to see a ton of arch tops and I'm going to show you that very few of them have holes in the same place where a manufacturer could reliably make a uh, pit guard mount that would fit pretty much everything when it comes to this. Even though Kay and Harmony made most of these guitars, the mounts for the pit guard are very different. So that said, hang on, watch what I do, and just hold me to the fact that I'm not going to put any extra holes in here. And we're going to take this from a period correct sounding 1930s instrument and be able to scream on it with some trash blues, the kind that Bob Log or Troy Murrow would play for us. So you might as well not get distracted. Give me a like subscribe if you have not subscribed i don't know what to tell you we're getting out of uh cigar box guitar land and getting into some real old guitars that we can completely trash in the end so hey take care of business down below i'm gonna get set up on the bench okay since this episode is about measuring i want to share with you the matchbook the episode which is triple beam pizza down there in echo park los angeles Triple Beam Pizza, show us what size piece you want. Uh, I'm talking about them. I don't care what size you want. <laughs> You're looking in the wrong place, Padna. Anyway, Triple Beam Pizza, right next to the Echo Echo Plex, where Bob Log the Third and Restaurant and other fine cultural phenomena. Phenomena, yeah, phenomena. Me, 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 me. Okay, so we're going to put this piece of cardstock up here. Now you want to remember the holes for the pit guard mounts come up here, stands over here like this and over here like this. And um, we're going to put, be putting electronics under here. That's why we're building our own. And on top of that, most of these arch tops you run across don't have one. So what I want to figure out here is when I run the electronics through the body, the wiring is going to come up in here. So I don't want this exposed. Besides that, most of the pit guards on these older guitars covered up the first half hole. So I'm going to put this piece of paper up against the fretboard like this because that's going to give me straight and I'm going to make sure that I come down and cover up about so I'm going to move this forward I'll end up cutting this off up here but I'm going to come down a little bit past that first F hole there and we'll put this like so and then we will tape this off. Now always be careful what kind of tape you use because this old stuff, it can you might end up pulling some of the finish off of this. So I put I put a tape here and here, and then there's a piece underneath here that's going to hold this in place like this. It needs to be sturdy. And um, let me show you a little trick. You don't have to put all the tape over here. You can just put the barely edge of it there to keep it. You're just trying to keep it in place because we're going to get a mark here that's going to give us our outside pattern. Notice, I told you a couple episodes ago, in trouble under the bridge. Remember up there right about now is that episode? You want to tape off where the bridge is when you start pulling the strings on this stuff the first time you've had it off because you have, want to line up the bridge. And again, if there's no shadow or something to tell you where it was, you'll be forever intonating the guitar. But anyway, we got this piece of paper in place and now it's time for the first step in our template. Okay, I have turned the guitar over. If you can't tell that, maybe it's time to lay off the weed a little bit, son. But got a rocket science pencil. We're going to check the camera angle here and move this so you can see. I'm going to take this pencil, I'm going to hold this, and I'm going to go around the base of the body like this and follow the contour. This guitar having its shape and using a pencil that rides up the side of the body of the guitar is really handy because it gives us the perfect outline of what we need. You see that? Now, 
you might be tempted to use a magic marker or something like that. You want to remember that this binding here will absorb color. It will absorb whatever's on your sanding wheel. It will absorb magic marker. You'll never get it out. And if you try to work it out or use some kind of uh, solvent or salve or something that you all have in Wisconsin, it's probably going to mess this up. So again, a pencil going down here where you've got it taped off will give you what you need. Okay, I have flipped this over now and I am going to pull off the piece of paper. And through the magic of Siegfried and Roy, when I turn it over, ooh, look at that. There it is. Now I can take my Chick Flick Teal scissors and I can cut that out. But the problem is, is that I can't have this right on the edge. I need it set in a little bit. Well, let me cut this out first. And I'm going to cut right inside the line. I'm going to be really careful so it matches the curve, right? Like so. Isn't this exciting? You know, you older ones, if I were you, I wouldn't be watching this kind of stuff because face it, you ain't got that long left. But anyway, your choice. I don't like that end being like that, so I'm going to round that up. Did you see that technique? Figure skaters covered my work. Ooh, look at that. Precise. Now, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to set it. Ooh, look at that. Right there. Goes right up to the edge. Now, what I have to do is I have to figure out how far in off the edge I want this. I don't want it like that. And I want to make sure it's uniform all the way around here. How am I going to do that? Well, the Shell Answer Man covets me, so I wouldn't ask a question. People who know me go, hey, Paul's Graph doesn't ask a question unless he already has the answer. And get ready to be amazed. We're going to make a tool. So the idea here is not only to draw out pit guards, but to measure them on a guitar. And then you can go home and copy it. If it's Don't buy a guitar just to get the pit guard. So... What are we going to need? Well, you are going to need a measuring device with the metric system on it. Got your metric hater. You're going to take a beating today. You are going to need a pencil. It isn't rocket science, but I do have a Northrop Grumman rocket science pencil. And notice Mr. Safety would be very much disappointed that I had the teeth of my flush cut saw put towards the pencil. So I cut myself, but then... I would have had an equal chance of cutting myself with the awl to mark holes and my splitting wedge or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I need a square. Next, I'm going to need a piece of neck cut off, you know, that we use for our cigar box guitars or coffee can and license plate guitars. That's six and a half inches long or 160 five millimeters long and then I'm gonna need a piece of five eighths dowel that is five eighths inch dowel that's how they sell it that is six inches long or 150 millimeters long I'm gonna need some thumb screws regla like these or I can get the real special ones that have these protective coatings and these are very easy to turn in comparison to these. Let your budget decide for you. Okay, next I'm going to need a nice set of drill bits like this one over here. Do not covet my drill bit set, but it's got all kinds of different ones. The smaller they are, the more there are of them because Guess what? You snap smaller ones, right? Use your head. So, we are going to take the piece of wood. We are going to come down. We're going to find the center. We are going to come down an inch and a quarter or 32 millimeters. And we are going to drill a hole 
that is five eighths inch in diameter. Now, before you start drilling away, always use a pilot bit and always go on both sides here and here. When you're dr drilling bigger holes, you're gonna blow this out. So if you start here and here and go all the way through, your Forstner bit or your big bit will follow that through. Next, when you are done, you are going to drill into the side here where the hole is a 5 30 seconds inch hole that goes through to the hole there. You see that? Right there. Easy money. Now you're going to take your 5 8 inch dowling. You're going to come down three quarters of an inch from the end or 15 millimeters. You're going to drill a 9 30 seconds. 9 30 seconds inch hole through all the way through this is a place where you want to both you want to run that pilot bit through or you're going to end up all cattywampus but you're going to drill a hole there then you're going to turn it on its side and you're going to drill another five 30 seconds inch hole right here you're going to end up with this is that not beautiful it show do. Now, you're going to take either your Econo trailer park thumb screws or you're going to take these high dollar Beverly Hills screws like I'm going to use and you're going to put them in here like this. One here. Yeah, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You're going to put one there like that. And then you're going to put this one in here like this are you starting to figure what's going to happen here inspector gadget okay we're going to take this thumb screw pointed at me i'm over here how you doing see here then i'm going to take this thumb screw pointed at me i'm going to put this in here like this you see that i can adjust how far this slides in and out easy there and tighten this up to where this does not move but you're asking yourself, what is this hole for? Well, we're going to go over here to my fancy wink can. And I'm going to pick out one of these love-themed pencils like this one. What's that say? I don't know. You're the smart one. Read it to me. I'm going to put this in here like this. Again, I can adjust this. Slide this in here like this and make this adjust up any way I want. I'm going to tighten this down lefty loosey righty tighty. And you're saying, what can I do with this besides anything I want? Everything. Okay, this is going to be magical. Sit down, breathe deeply. I cannot be responsible for what happens now. All right, y'all, don't tell anybody what we've been doing. Say I want to come in about, oh, I don't know, maybe that far off the edge of my fingerboard. My fingerboard, the body of my guitar, what am I talking about? So I guess I could take my finger and go like this, right? Now forget that. Let's pull out our fancy high dollar tool. All right, I put my mark with my pencil right there. Notice I didn't put it anywhere else because, ooh, here it is. Remember this? I just put this alongside the body of the guitar and I adjusted my scrap apparatus right here and right here until I can just go like this. Oh my gosh, is it beautiful. All right, look at that. Now I got a really nice line to cut on. Got to watch where I put my tape, but bingo. Let me put this back on here. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Yeah, we need Vanna White here to make this legitimate. That is so pretty. All with this gadget right here. Can you outdid yourself, man? Yeah, I know, dude. I know. 
Oh, almost forgot. It is available in Chick Flick Teal for the more sophisticated buyer. Okay, guys, in reality, this right here is simply a knockoff on one of these. Remember this? You simply take the thumb screw, you move this back, you measure whatever you want with it. All I did was put a hole for a pencil here. Um, yeah, so this isn't new, but you know what? I just take things that are commonplace in life and make them magnificent and utterly disamazing. So, okay, guys, so let's say you, you know somebody's got an arch top, has got a pit guard on it that you need. You can basically take this, go over there, and uh, move this in or out, find out what um, how far away it is, and then you have your measurement. Last thing um, I want to tell you about is when you're making these, these are different for most of uh, your different arch tops, even different models by the same company. So I would want to write on here what this is on this template before I go cut it out. Um, let me show you something. Okay, here we go. Let's change out guitars. It's party time. It's going to be Coveter's Corner here. I swear. I better pan this one for you. Oh, look at that. Clean one owner. It's a harmony. Look at that finish. Oh, pretty. It's kind of like giraffe zebra finish or something like that. But the point of the matter here is when I am doing these pit guards and finding out what they are and stuff, there's a couple measurements I want to take if I've run across a friend who's got one or something. So I want to figure out again how far off the edge the pit guard starts in from the body let's not turn everything over i want to make sure the matchbook of the episode gets its full coverage here along with my product display wait a minute what am i doing my product display anyway i want to know how far that pit guard comes down into this area and again how far it is from the edge of the body i want to know if i can figure out where the holes are how long the support is for the pit guard now once i know all that stuff i can write it down on my template and then i've got one and then um but how do you know what the model number is right all right so we know this is a harmony why because it says so right there, right? But what else do we know? How do we know what model number it is? Well, remember my episode on how uh, Worms Guide to Cheap Arch Tops or Buying Cheap Arch Tops, whatever it was called. There's a link to it right up there right about now. I told you about having the right tools and stuff and what to look for on these things. But I'm going to take this bendy light here. And I'm going to put it in this F-hole over here. We're going to come over here. We see that it says... A number and it says H1214 that's the model number Harmony 1214 and if you look right there you see that it says S60 this thing was made in 1960 as it's old as me now some people argue about the S it'll either say S or F some people think that that means spring and fall some people think it means first or second half of the year but anyway this is a model h1214 made in 1960 so if i were to make a template i would just mark it h1214 i'll know that it will fit every other model and i can cross reference some internet sources to tell me what will fit what but this is a nice guitar do not covet my harmony H1214. All right, then we are going to take this off and we are going to put it on a piece of wood. And then we are going to probably cut two pieces of wood because I'm going to need this one on a piece of wood to mount the pit guard material, a pit guard that I cut out of the material I ordered. And then this is going to sit up high just below the deck of the fretboard here so it doesn't get in the way but we're going to tilt this up because 
I am going to hide the electronics right in this area here. So my potentiometer for my volume and stuff. And that way I can run my wiring and stuff here up through the F hole and it will be hid. You see that? Wherever it sits, that F hole is right underneath there. So the wiring come up, I can put my potentiometer over in here somewhere and it will stay out of the way of the brackets and everything will look good as long as I can get this up. Now, I'm going to want to take the cork material that I used pretty frequently and I'm going to put this, it's, it's sticky on one side. I'm going to put this on the underneath of anything that um, is going to be pointed down towards the guitar body that's metal. That way if something happens where this starts to come down after a while or relax, then this cork material will protect the guitar. I will also, our, our, our pickup, our humbucker, is going to have a tab on it that fits over here that will bolt to the pick guard as well. And so I'm going to make sure that all of that has this cork material on the bottom too. So nothing will come in contact or mar this. The whole point here is if someone wanted to pull all this stuff off when uh, the day comes, they can pull it off and discover that underneath here there are no holes or mars. Now there's going to be some tricky work to do on the tail end of the guitar because we are going to have to, to ground the strings to the bridge. Um, and so I'll kind of show you what we're going to do uh, with the strap button that's on there and how to run that wiring up through here and make sure this is not flopping around. But again, everything on here is supposed to be, in the end, removable. I caught a lot of flack from people. Some people were saying, well, hey, it's got a hole in it. Um, and once that hole got fixed and you you did that with the body, and it's lost the original binding and stuff that all that's going to take away from the value of the guitar which it should but i'm still not going to tear this thing up any more than i have to and i would really like to hear somebody play something like silver dollar surprise on it or something hint hint anyway let's get this on wood and cut out and then once that's done, we'll be ready for the next episode, which is how to make all this work and sound this thing up, hot rod it up without having holes in the top. All right, here we go. Ooh, look, it's a nice Patron box. Well, hey, guess what? Yeah, it was a nice Patron box. Time to do your duty, son. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. Cover that right up like that. I hear you out there. Oh, you know, you could get two out of this if you move this over here. I know you are, but what am I? Okay guys, in all seriousness, we are done with this now. I have cut it out and did a little bit of work on the belt sander. Of course, I'm going to make another one of these and one of these because I don't have to worry about this. Then I can just write on here what's happening. And this seems to fit really well where I need it. Of course, the area that I'm going to need the potentiometer to be at is right over here. It's going to be kind of out of the way. You notice that most people that play arch tops use a grounding point. Um, they'll put their, their little finger on the bridge or something like that. They all do it. So I don't want anything in, that's going to be right in here. And remember, the closer I get to here, the less room there's going to be because I can bend the bracket that's going to come up here and this one to some extent to get this to arch up. This is actually going to have to arch up like so. And then I'll use a thin body potentiometer and then you can see where that line is. I'm going to put that right there 
you can see that all I have room for the wires to come up out of here. Anyway, the one thing that I did notice here already is that this seems to want to ride right here on this point of the body. I really don't want that. I want it to be uniform. Remember, I am going to put cork underneath anything that could come in contact with the body, anywhere it comes in contact with the body. So I can protect the top of the guitar like this, okay. And like we did in the episode about trouble under the bridge or we're worried about replacing a bridge on here and having the guitar being used to it for so long and then all of a sudden there's a pressure point here or here and then there's a running split. If we're worried about how this kind of stuff might come in contact and there might be load isolation, we can simply take a piece of this 400 grit paper like so and it will kind of match the top of what's going on here. Remember, we want to make sure that everything is protected here like so okay and wherever that is I can take this and lay it here and just mark and go back and forth like this and you can already see right there that it's starting to sand off anyway when you start seeing sanding marks across the whole thing you will know that you've taken and made a little bow in here and then that way when you mount it it will park itself up like that you'll have cork paper underneath here and nothing will happen this is going to have to be up like i said quite a bit to get that electronic piece right down in there and that should work now we're just waiting on the mail to get the material here we'll mount it and then i'll close the episode all right guys the mail was so good to me today i finally got the material in for the pit guard and on the material it came it said you rock yeah they know about me they know we know that but thank you thank you for recognizing what everybody already knows now remember this of course you do what shocked me is again this will fit an h 1214 harmony h 1214 and it will fit our arch craft that we uh, have been working on so I lay this out like this and lay this to the edge, make a mark there, one, two, three, four. Would you believe it, for less than $20 to the door per sheet, I can get four pit guards out of this. This is the tortoise shell and this is black. Now, this is four ply thick. So, I really don't need to be using that wood backing behind it. See that? It's pretty thick stuff. Now, the black stuff is three-ply. But I want you to think about this. For less than $20, I can get four of these. But let me show you something scary. I am stumbling all over the place. But do you see that bracket right there? That bracket cost me $9, and I still have one to put up there. So at that rate, I'm going to have $14, $15 into just the brackets when I've got four pit guards that I can do for less than $20. Okay, that's going to be a topic for another day because we just can't have that. But I'm fully impressed with that. Now, what I'm going to do... So I'm going to take this out. A nice thing is it's covered on both sides with a protective film. Um, our pit guards always have um, two layers of film, it says. And I'm going to give you, oh, you know what I'm after, right? I'm going to give you a link below to where I got this stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this double-sided tape. I'm going to put it on my pattern. Patron, you did a good job, son. Anyway, I'm going to cut out one of these right now. So I'm going to make a mark here. And I'm not going to waste this material. 
um, I'm going to use as much of it as I can, even if it's for picks that I can cut with a pick stamp I have. But anyway, I'm going to cut one out of here. And you always want to remember that it's probably best to mark up the back side. And so for this to end up like this, with the tortoiseshell side up here like this, I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to need to do it over here, you see. So this will have to be face down here and then I'll just go along I don't need this piece of paper on here I can put it away with the right but I'm not going to want to cut anything more than I need to so it's got a flat edge down there it's got a flat edge there I'm going to put that right up to there like so and then I can take a pencil and mark there and there I'm going to draw that line up to all the way up there Make sure I cut this off straight first and then go around like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this double-sided tape and stick this on here. And then that way I can use this to cut this out. I'm going to do that now and catch back up with you. Oh, one last thing I want to show you. I have my line drawn out here like so. What I do not want to do is I do not want to, when I cut this out, chip out the other side of it. That's where the chipping will take place from the bandsaw. So I'm going to put this tape on here. You see where this line is. I'm going to flip this over now. And as long as I line up a piece of tape to there, like so, it won't split out. So see you in a minute. All right, guys. There we go. Look at that. I have cut the one off and I have room for one, two, three easily. And I had a few pieces left again that I can cut a few picks out of or find some use for. That'll be handy. Uh, but the important part is look what I have. Look at that. And um, that will fit on the guitar perfectly. It worked really well, really good on the belt sander. There's not too much um, chip out or anything like that. I can take a piece of um, fine sandpaper like this and just run down the edge like this and make sure everything is good. Nothing's odd. It works really easy. It didn't chip out at all. And I like that. Um, the one thing I did notice is that the edges of the material where it's laminated right here, um, it does, it, it needs a little bit of work. It's not exactly even. So, but once you see that white blend through, you can see those layers there. Um, and this worked out really good. So now it's just time to put it on the guitar. Okay, so our pattern that sat there come in real handy. And we're going to mark that off. Um, one thing I did notice is this wood is pretty stiff. It should be. It's laminated, good wood, good box. I, I talk about this a lot. You know, some guys are after tone and, and, and purity in boxes. And I'm sorry, but my stuff has to be out on the road and deal with things. So that's why I use those Camacho boxes. They're nothing spectacular. Uh, they're pressed fiberboard is what they are. They're certainly not this, but i got to have durability in anybody that puts stuff in the hands of guitarists that are touring understands that but anyway we set this on here and look at that um one of the things i didn't anticipate that actually is work going to work out good for me is this is a little bit flexible now so that part about sanding and putting a piece of paper there and sanding all this down and stuff i can get away from that because this flexes a little bit of course i'm going to go ahead and use my cork paper and put a strip of it right here where it meets uh, the wood and that may elevate things a little bit so I'll have to think about that but um, it is protected you really don't want to take this film off uh, right now while you're still working on it and when you do there's a little bit of fuzz left on here so the last thing you want to do once you get your holes drilled for your mounts and everything is really fine sandpaper and go along like that 
and get rid of those edges like that. But this is going to look good. Black would have looked equally uh, good in this application, but there it is. So now I just have to figure out how I'm going to build a bracket for here, and I, I'm certainly going to uh, figure out a way to use this bracket here. And that'll be the subject of another episode. All right, guys, I really couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. Uh, got a piece of paper, uh, used our fancy tool uh, to mark this off, and then got some good material from a good vendor. Again, I'm going to give you a link below, and then this will sit right up here. I would have went ahead and mounted this, but the next couple of episodes are going to be about first getting these brackets and we're going to make the brackets and I think you're going to be happy with the outcome and I think there's some structural things that are important that I'll explain when you use these um, standardized brackets you want to make sure that they fit and they don't put pressure points along the wrong places and stuff and you end up with splits that you don't want but I'm really happy about this so watch for an episode about making these brackets uh, that will fit these individual guitars. We're going to look at a couple guitars or a bunch of them for you to covet and see how the bracket system is set up and how we can make our own brackets to fit that stuff. And then ultimately we'll be figuring out how to put this on here and put the electronics and hide it under here and use the F holes and the strap button to not put holes in the top and mount a pickup here onto our pick guard. So, Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget, give me a like and subscribe and I will see you soon.